Hey guys, Mouse here with the Patreon sponsored Speed Paint. Thank you for your support. As you can see, I started out with a sketch from my sketchbook. I just took a picture of it, pulled it into clip, and started drawing on top of it. With something that I'm moving from traditional to digital like this, I really like to have that initial sketch as a base to build on. Um, and I'll go in and add her clothes and the moon here with that. I sometimes have trouble with sketching straight onto a digital canvas, so being able to expand on a traditional sketch helps me overcome some of that anxiety. Working in the sketchbook, I was really just trying to get a sense of pose, and I went through a number of iterations before I settled on this one. Um, and I draw in that dark red color here pretty much always, but you can see when I fill in the background uh, just here in a second that it makes it difficult to see so I just set the sketch layer to multiply. I'm also using a dark purple line art this time instead of the dark red like I normally do. I wanted the color scheme for this piece to be a set of complementary colors that I generally avoid, which is yellow and purple. I really do not usually enjoy that combination of colors, but I wanted to see if I could make it work for me. Uh, with the line art, you can see I'm sticking very close to my sketch. Uh, this is just because I like to have a fairly finished sketch before I line so I don't have to improvise too much. Some people are really good at that, but I am unfortunately not one of those people. Uh, I turn the sketch layer off when I get done to see if I missed anything, and you'll see that I did, um, because I don't know if you've noticed already, but I completely missed her shoulder that's on the other side. <laughs> We'll scroll back up here in a second. There it is. See? Um, so anyway, I'm only adding line art to the character here, so the moon will just be this solid circular shape. And after I fill it in with this textured brush, I'll turn the opacity down so I can see better what I'm coloring on her. Um, the set of colors that I use is actually one I put together myself with Copic swatches, so I did have to manually input every single Copic color code into Clip, but it was, it was well worth it. It took a really long time, but now I can use approximately the same colors in my traditional art and my digital art, which helps keep a sense of consistency between the two mediums that I find really appealing. Um, you'll see here in a second that I turned the layer off that goes with her skin so that I can color in her hair because there's not a lot of contrast between what I use for her skin and her hair local colors. I always do the character's local colors first regardless of what kind of lighting or color scheme I'm going for in the image because I feel like it's a good starting point for me personally. And it doesn't bother me that there's not a ton of contrast between these two colors because you're almost never going to see them right next to each other in, a, in the finished image. Shading and highlights mean that those will rarely ever touch, which is very intentional. Uh, it's good to have contrast, and I, I, tr I try to <laughs> make images that are interesting to look at. Um, I'm using this light purple for her dress instead of a pure white. Uh, it's not supposed to be the Princess Serenity dress, but something similar. Um, but it is, it is supposed to read as white in the setting. Uh, it's important to use colors that are not ever pure white or pure black, um, because the eye will jump there on its own. So that's, that's what I'm doing here, is uh, going with something that'll look similar. Uh, finishing up the flats, going in with a darker color to make the background more interesting, and turning up the opacity on the moon again, um, I'll change the color of it here in a second, because I want to be able to make it look like it's glowing. I started out on the glow with my standard shading brush, and was going to blend out that glow, but I changed my mind and decided that I like the rougher texture better. Um, so here we go. Here you can see what I was talking about with the shading. I'm shading her hair um, in this next bit with a kind of pinkish purple set to multiply because I really like how it looks on the yellow that I use for her hair. And it helps tie that purple-yellow color scheme together even more. 
Um, I use this color to shade other characters' hair sometimes too, but I started it on Usagi and I just, I just love it on her hair. I think it looks so nice and natural. Um, also shading her dress, uh, filling that in. Let's see. Oh, here uh, I'm going to adjust the overall lighting. And to do that, I take two layers clipped to the folder I have my character in, um, unless I'm applying the lighting to the whole piece, of course. Two layers, one on multiply and one on overlay. The colors vary depending on the mood I'm going for, but here I used, again, a purple and a yellow color. After that, I go in and erase where necessary to intensify the lighting effect and change the opacity as needed. This is especially useful when I'm going for a backlit, or I guess in this case, a frontlit effect, since we're seeing her back. Um, just went in and made the background a little more dramatic, so that there's more, again, contrast. Uh, and then I wanted to add this reflection. Um, I'll use a Gaussian blur here in a second to make it look more natural. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, by the way. Feel free to laugh at me if I am not. Um, I wanted this reflection to make her feel simultaneously a little more grounded in whatever this environment is, as well as a little more ethereal in a way. I du duplicated my multiply layer right there to make the lighting more dramatic because I am me and must be me at all times. Uh, added some stars right there. Um, and then I tried adding some more with a different scattered airbrush, but decided I didn't like it. And then I was done. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>